I've never heard of her actually. No, no. Well, she's not. She's not very famous. It, you can see from that photo that she's got a self-portrait of herself on the on the yeah. left hand side. Yeah. So she she is an artist, and I've called it an artist, not a muse, because um, she, of course, was uh, a, in a long term relationship with um, Lucian Freud, who we've already looked at. Ah, of course. And I think there's always a problem. One of the one of the articles I looked at was by Rachel Cusk in 2019, which she called "Can a woman who is an artist just be an artist?" And uh, she focused on Celia Paul and one other artist. I think it was a very very good article. And I've I've drawn on that quite a bit. Anyway, it's uh, and there's also uh, an article called "The Art of Celia Paul: A Mistaken Muse," and that's one I agree with by Rosemary War. Anyway, she was she was born in 1959 in a place called Trivandrum in India. Her parents were missionaries, which you used to have in those days. You don't tend not to tend to be people from the home countries, you know, the actual countries that, that are there rather than people coming from Britain to minister that to their Christian needs. But uh, she and her do and her uh, four sisters were all brought up there for a while until they they came back to to England. Uh, quite soon after to live in Devon. So she's, um, she's, she is st now quite a famous um, portrait painter mainly. And unlike um, Freud, Lucian Freud, who painted everybody and anybody, she concentrated on members of her family, people she knew, because she said she didn't know how people portrait painters could just paint somebody that they had no relationship with or no real relationship with. Hi, Gordon. Um, because uh, she felt she needed some sort of uh, empathy with them to be able to draw them. So you could say it's a very different approach to painting that she had. She, um, this is a picture of her with, with Lucian Freud. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when it was taken, uh, probably in his, his flat. Um, when he first met her, he, he was, um, she, she, when she was 16, she, her art was so good, her art teacher sent the information off to the Slade Art College in London, which is a very famous one, and um, they, they asked her to come down for an interview, she did, and she got into the Slade at the age of 16, and remember this was a very innocent, religious um, girl who was coming into the big city on her own at the age of 16, which is quite remarkable. And Lucian Freud met her in, two years later when she was 18, and he, I think, was uh, 55 at the time. And he said when he first saw her paintings, when he got into the room at the Slade, he said it was like walking into a honeypot. Now, she thought he meant the paintings, but he didn't. He meant the women there because <laughs> his, he had a re long term relationship that was coming to an end. Well, not long term, a relationship that was coming to an end. And he deliberately went there to look for a potential new girlfriend. Okay. Well, that can show his kind of uh, um, attitude, which I, I don't think is, is very good. Mm. He, he did, I think he did actually genuinely like her art. So he wants to find a new girlfriend, and she was caught in his spell, and a potent one it was too. But you can the, the, the look on her face when she's looking at him now. It's it's it, almost reverential, isn't it? There's something about the way she's looking at him. Yes. Yeah, it's it's a good it, it's a good photo from that point of view. That was much much later, of course. They they were in a relationship for about ooh, over 10, 12 years, I think. How would you That's describe his? How would you describe his expression, Bernard, do you think? Uh, I mean, she is looking on in veneration, isn't she? What's he looking at? He looks Just... a bit in the mood, doesn't he? Yeah. He looks, he looks yeah, as if he's a mind's on something else. Yes, yeah. absolutely, yeah. yeah. And a bit Wait, kind of self-satisfied and confident in yes. himself. Yes, arrogance almost, isn't yes. there? Yeah, I mean, yeah. we might be reading things into it, but it does, just does feel like that. No, it's almost a painting in itself, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's a, yeah. I know it's a very interesting one of them. Yeah, yeah. And she looks quite sort of tight and buttoned up. Yeah. Even though she, she's, she's still very, I think, she's an, she's an inbuilt Puritan. 
You know, she's a yes. Puritan. And because yes. the, flat, the flat that she's still got, that he got for her in Bloomsbury, opposite the British Museum, was up um, uh, 80 steps. It was the fourth floor, and it was a flat. And she keeps it hardly heated and with bare boards and in a bare feet, and she's got nothing in it, and she allows nobody else in it except her on, or on, with her permission. She's a very strict, austere sort of person, but obviously got into a relationship with him. So the day we met, he took me back to his studio, and went, <laughs> come and look at my etchings, yes, <laughs> and showed me the early stages of two plants. Yeah. I think he would have liked to have seduced me there and then, but he, he waited a couple of days. And, um... <laughs> Long courtship then. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'd been brought up in a religious family. I'd never, I'd never had a sexual thing with a boy at all. So it was straight from nothing to Lucian Freud. You know, talk about the, um, the, uh, the, the ant and the spider. It was, it was very much like that, I think. So it's a very... The fact is, okay. we're talking about her in relation to Lucian Freud, because partly that's what made her and what is import still important to her. Now, this this was the painting that um, Freud did of her later on in the relationship, called uh, "A Naked Girl with Egg." He was it, she when it, it, she said various things about this, and she said. He worked outwards gradually. He admired the rhubarb pink of my fingers next to my face. When he came to painting my breasts, I felt his scrutiny intently. I felt exposed and hated the feeling. I cried throughout these sessions. He tried to comfort me by telling how much I pleased him, but I didn't believe him because the evidence of what he really felt was there on the easel in front of me. Um, so he, he, he said he needed more of a foreground, so he decided he would, uh, would get an object. So he said his breast reminded him of, of, of eggs. He boiled an egg, cut it in half, and placed it on a white dish, which you can see in front. He made me lie in position while he painted the eggs in the dish in front of me. So that was, um, you, you can see. It's a real, it, it, real bull, wasn't he? <laughs> and this, this is the last painting that Freud did shortly before they broke up. Now that's not that's not Lucian Freud who's lying down there. He's painting um, somebody called um, I can't remember his name now. But it, it was um, he, she again. She wasn't very happy with this because again she was painting it as as somebody who was there with a. a it's in her studio with her bare feet with used sort of paint tubes below her with a, a, a stick in front of her. And it's, uh, she felt in some ways it was kind of a, a cruel portrait. Mm. Mm. He sort of jumped in on her, on her work, hasn't he? He's, yes, yes. He's her. So you've got, he is a remarkable painter. There's no doubt about it. These are two, um, two sort of uh, drawings she did of him while he slept, 1982-1983. And a, a little poem she wrote at the time. His sleeping profile like wax and the closed eyes sealed down. Blind wax, frighteningly still. Don't, don't, don't open your eyes and catch me looking. I'm senseless as the cushion at your head. Remember, I have no eyes. Take that for what you will. But they are, they're, they're, rather, they're rather nice little drawings, aren't they? Yeah. And this is after she'd, he'd left her and uh, her painting of the two of them. And um, her son, they had a son together called Frank. And this is what Frank says about his mother's painting. Isolation is deeply important both to my mum's work and to her peace of mind. Her room is bare except for a bed, a chaise long, two chairs and a lamp, as well as the occasional stray daub of paint. Its studio, which no one else may enter without permission, is a mass of splintered floorboards, paints, splatters, and canvases. But like the bedroom, is devoid of any of, of what any ornaments which others might find necessary for a sense of self-assurance. So as you can see, she's a very individual and intense sort of person, and one who is very religious and not used to this, and yet was in a very 
almost erotic relationship with um, Lucy and Freud that lasted to quite a, for a long time. And in a way, I think throughout history, um, women have often been seen as subjects of art rather than artists. Um, and uh, I think uh, Rachel Cuss says that their, their natural propensity for giving themselves up to the experience combined with an aptitude for stillness has made many women great muses to great male artists. And that's true, isn't it? It's usually female muse, male artist. Very rarely mm -hmm. the other way around. Yeah. She seems to have exaggerated her own features in some sort of... Yes. It's not just mournful and sad. There's something a bit... Yes, it's, 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 it's kind of, it's blurred and, and sort of almost it's, like through a memory, isn't it? Through a memory that she's had of him. Once you see her eye, you can't take your, your gaze off it. That's, <laughs> no, it no, it's it weird. pulls you in, it's a bit weird. It is weird, I agree with you. This is what she said about his moods. His mood is brittle gentleness. I say one careless, foolish word and he flings a hundred back at me. So angrily, full of hatred, and then the ice-cold kindness seals the crack again, and I'm left feeling completely humiliated. Soon I lose my voice, my thoughts are covered in mist. He talks to me about the impermanence of appearance, and it can only be made permanent by having a continuous moral fibre. My lost thought voice, my thoughts covered in mist. <laughs> and, it, and, you know, it's not, it's not a very even relationship. This is when she started to paint of her own accord, one of her first real paintings, and her main subject for many years was a mother. Um, and she says, I, it seemed so artificial to me to draw a person one didn't know or have any involvement with. Surely art was about recording a personal vision. I needed to work from someone who mattered to me. The person who mattered most to me was my mother. And this is one of her in 1982. She looks really sad, her mother, doesn't she? Her yes. mother looks yes. really yes. sad. Yeah. Now, this is a picture of um, her age 17, a oh. year before Lucy and Freud. You can see she's she's got that sort of elfin-like beauty, hasn't she? Yeah. Um, she looks fragile, but very beautiful. And you could see at age 18, she wouldn't have changed much from that. She's only been there a year or so. Um, and that's what... Lucy and Freud store, I suppose. She's got a gentle smile. It's yes, it's a, I, I find it's a quite haunting picture, that one, I find. Yeah. So, as I said, she came from a very religious family. Her, her, she, her four sisters, four sisters, um, they, they, her, father be, her father became Bishop of Bradford. Her sister Jane is married to Rowan Williams. Do you know who he was, who is? Former Archbishop of Canterbury. Oh. <laughs> they, they came back from India and joined the religious community in Exmoor. Um, well, this is her first meeting with Freud. Once I was inside, he'd invited around Freud's house. He pressed me against the wall and started kissing me, she wrote in her autobiography, Self Portrait, which came out in 2019. He then pulled me onto the ground. The doorbell rang, and I felt very relieved. <laughs> he had to go and answer it. But anyway, she, um, she said as, as they got into a relationship, my metabolism, my metabolism seemed subtly changed. I wondered if my mother would notice any difference in me. I stopped brushing my hair or washing my clothes. I felt that I had sinned and that something had been irreparably lost. I felt guilty and powerful at the same time. I felt I'd stepped into a limitless and dangerous world. This is uh, one of the very first things that she did was wood engraving in 1975. Um, I think it shows some of the raw talent that she's got there. Yeah. I think it's lovely. It's beautiful. That's very fairy-like as well, isn't it? Yes, sort of. yes, it, yes, you're right. There, there's a sort of Victorian nature to them. So this is her with her four sisters in uh, Devon in 1974. So you can see it, was, it must have been a, a very strange house. I think this is a very telling photograph. It's um, Celia Paul with uh, Lucian Freud and his daughter Bella in the early 80s. Had his daughter Bella 
as you can see, is more or less the same age as uh, Celia. So it's um, he at the time, and this is a description from a, an article, another article I read. He was famous, promiscuous and vain, entitled, ambitious, greedy for life and status. And on Celia Paul, he unwittingly or carelessly inscribed an especially tragic chronicle. The uh, strangeness of her clerical childhood had left her with a number of qualities fatal to the situation. Extreme innocence, an iron will, a hatred of her own body, an unusual capacity for both suffering and devotion, which I think does say quite a lot about it, actually. Mm. So she, she described her as, as almost like a, a modern day Jane Eyre. Um, her thwarted passion and humiliated femininity around the redemptive fantasy of a Mr. Rochester. However, this Mr. Rocher was not to be humbled by righteous love. <laughs> mm. Oh, and that, that's the, the painting I mentioned before. I was going to say something else about it. I forgot what it was now. Um, yeah, he was called Angus Cook, who was a friend of, actually a friend of hers, and used by both of them as a, a, he's a writer and an artist. He often sat for them. Um, at that point, they were drifting apart. They met regularly, but he was in relationship, in a very serious, a more serious relationship with somebody else who was gradually taking over from her. So in 1988, I decided to split up with it, him, and that was the end of their relationship. Though in the meantime, she'd had a child by him called Frank. After her, uh, her mother died, her sister Kate became her main sitter. And these are two pictures of her. Or uh, her mother hadn't died. She was too old and too frail to climb the 80 stairs to a studio. <laughs> that would have been a test of anybody, I think, isn't it? Their devotion to being a, a subject. And she often painted uh, women in these white cowls that she had, which seemed very suited for, to this family. It was, um, it was all, you've got, you'll see one when, when they're, they're, they're sat and she portrays them mourning the death of their father. This is the... The self-portrait we saw before from May uh, 2010. And again, it shows... That's just horribly sad, isn't it? In there's, 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 yeah. a, there's a really deep, ingrained sense yeah. of... It's harrowing. It's uh, absolutely harrowing. harrowing. It but it, it, there's also something very impressive about it in that she's together enough to be able to paint that. Mm. Yes. Mm. And it's, in a way, it's, all, it's harsher than a photograph of her at the same time was. So the, the painting was the only way she could sort of resolve the situation, yeah. you know, between the two sides of her personality, really. This is a family group of her, um, her mother, who's, uh, I think, at the front, Kate, who's at the back, and her father, who she rarely painted because he, he didn't like sitting. <laughs> she required a lot of sitting, a bit like um, Freud did. He, he once painted somebody for about 13 months, almost every night, I think it was. So she felt this was her first real painting in 1980. Um, my mother is on the left with her hand protectively on Kate's clasped hands. Kate is looking demurely down and my mother is looking directly at me. My father's in profile and looks as if he's fighting off sleep, which he probably was. <clears throat> I placed a narrow mirror on the wall opposite the window. The mirror reflected the beech tree in the garden. I painted it as a narrow strip in the background between Kate and my father and painted myself reflected in it. I don't know whether you can see that. I can't see it. Uh, it's not no, no? I hadn't yeah. noticed the background. Mm. It's the faces. They just look so miserable. And <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thinking, what's he thinking? I don't know. Yeah. Really yeah, she's saying, my mother's expression is fiercely protective of Kate and her expression is accusatory, though full of concern. The whole composition is lit with an inward glow. It's certainly interesting, though, isn't it? Mm. This is a self portrait in 2019. I, I like this one. The, the dress, the way she draws it, reminds me of Klimt, actually. You remember when we did Klimt? It's got that sort of bejeweled look to it almost. I, I, I really like this. And this next one is, is perhaps one of my favourite ones of all of hers. 
and it said the bomb, they they moved in um he, my fa when he's when her father became bishop of bradford in 81 they the family moved to um somewhere near there the room had views towards howarth and the bronte sisters which it inspired her to paint some of the paintings at this time it's much Howarth more bradford, um, as you can see and its surroundings were darker bigger untamed the local people kept their distance my mother often felt isolated but i think that's a really nice painting that one I, 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 it's it's almost like it's there might be a storm about to go but there's a glow from the sun that's peeping from behind the clouds why did you What's stick the, the tree there in the middle of this very, very good point i don't know maybe because it was there it doesn't look very uh, realistically they'd be there doesn't it? what do no. why do you think that she did it absolutely no idea it looks like an overgrown sort of dandelion that suddenly <laughs> just appeared and <laughs> I thought it well, was it just a sunflower. I thought it was a sunflower. But she's but, painted it dark, hasn't she, to catch yeah, your eye? It, it's, and it's, and it's you see the much, graveyard in the front? No. Yeah, yeah. Much more impressionistic than her other work. Mm. Yeah, she's she nearly always did people. So these uh, these ones are things were I, I, are quite interesting. This was another another other mother. Uh, when her father died, her mother went to live in Cambridge. Um, she was 56 when she widowed, and she was 87 when she died in 2015. And this is the one that I really like. My Sisters in Mourning, 2015. It was just after their... Uh, it was painted on the 20, 10th of July, started on the 10th of July, or, and he died on the 10th of July. I couldn't find out whether it was the same year. Whether it was immediately done following his death, I don't know. I bet but, that's. Uh, I bet that look, looks really something in the in the real life. You know, if you were to see the painting, I bet yeah. that's. Uh, yeah. It, yes. Yes. I think that's one which would really benefit from seeing it face to face, mm, so to speak. Mm. But again, um, it's sad, isn't it? You know, everything is morbid. Well, you, you could say it's sad or contemplative. Oh crikey! Yeah, Remember, the father just died. Oh, and the lady had, on the sorry, Bernard, the lady on the right, which you know, goodness gracious, that's Kate, yeah, Sad, they're, isn't they're Rosalind, it? Lucy, Jane, and Kate, mm. and in, in age order. The dresses are like shrouds and ash colored. The silent sisters are sharing the grief. Everything is seen through a cloud of smoke and ash. I didn't want to break the unity of the group by putting myself in the painting, I would have had to done it sort of reflected in a mirror or something. I'd have looked too active and disturbed the silence. She likes the silence of it. Apparently, they they quite enjoyed the the long periods where they had to sit for this, as it remember they were very much. It's almost like the family was a con contemplative order of nuns. A um, very interesting family. But they all look as if they've known pain. It's not just like a quiet thing. They, they all look as if they've really suffered. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, maybe the second one from the left is the the most seems at most peace with herself, doesn't she? Mm. 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 Everything's tight, isn't it, with the lady on the left, as though she can't, yeah. you know, she's just a, a, yeah, a ball yeah. of. A I mean, only only the one on the left reminds me of Angela Merkel, <laughs> 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 which is totally irrelevant. But there you go. <laughs> Paintings do that to you. You can know all sorts of ways. Half, half in another world already. They look yeah. like so. They're, they're almost fading away, aren't they? An I, angel. Think it, I bet it's a brilliant painting to see, but I wouldn't want it on my wall. No, I, <laughs> so I would. I would. So I would. I, I like the fact that the the third one along, as um, you've actually can see the colour of her hair. Yeah. 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 The others you can't. There's more. There's more. You focus on it a little bit more because it's it sort of stands out a bit, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's the only bit of color in the painting, isn't it? Well, there yes. are, it's yeah. around yeah. them. There are da daubs of color elsewhere, but not much. No. It's one of the greatest paintings you can imagine, really. Gosh. This is a one of a, a mother and the cross. I'm not sure whether the where the cross is on this. And I haven't put the date on, unfortunately. Sorry about that. It's the cross is on the window. 
That's um, the oh yes, of course. Yes, yes. It's yeah. the cross that's on the window. He's looking at it, yeah. That is a cross because it's it's not exactly no. the shape of the window divider, is it? Yeah, that's no. right. No. She's mm. emphasised that, hasn't she? Yes, yes. And I, I don't know who the, who Anila is actually, but that, this is um, another one she did in two thousand and one. This is one perhaps t most typical of a mother, as she's getting quite old at that point. Um, my mother with a rose. And again, a bit like um, Freud, she doesn't she doesn't make people look better than they are. You know, they, you feel that um, she's getting through to something as of they are rather than um, just trying to give them something that they'll enjoy and they'll like. And this one, I, I can't, I, I'm not too sure about the provenance of this next one. This one looks so different. I'm not sure it's by her even, but it must be. That those, maybe they, she did one that was like that as well as a, um, because you can see there, you can see her in the background, can't you? Yeah, she talked about that, didn't she? In another yeah. one, but didn't want maybe to this is the one. That maybe she did a couple of them while she was uh, she was mm. doing the other one, which when that says 1985, and that first one was well, much later. Okay. I don't know. Anyway, it's, it's hard to say. I, I might have got the dates wrong on some of these. She's she's sort of obsessive with the nineties, isn't she? You know, they all look sat in yeah. the nineties. One, one of her sisters had um, had made them from a, a reel of just um, bedding cloth, I think. Yeah, so well, uh, yeah. God. Right. Made it maybe no, maybe I... painting the bodies easier. Sorry, Judith, you were saying. This next one you put on, I really like that. It's a lovely one, isn't it? And that's partly, at least is the view from her flat. Now, when I, when I look at the relationship between her and Freud, I must all, I, I do fo focus, like I imagine you have, on the way in which he exploited her. But on the other hand, she, they, she, he did transform her life, but that wasn't, I'm not excusing him, but it wasn't all bad for her. She still remembers those times with, with you know, or looks back on them as something that were important to her. And as well, he did buy her this, this um, top floor flat in Bloomsbury opposite the, um, the British Museum, which is quite a legacy to have got. And I think her son was, was included in his will, unlike some of them who were of his uh, many children by different women um, who were ignored in his will. So he's, she still feels that she, he, he bought it her in uh, 1982 it's on the fourth floor, climb of 80 steps, and it serves as a, being a receptacle for light. I'm on the level, well, you'll see the next one. She's on the level of the figures on the frieze on the front pediment of the yeah, mm -hmm. British Museum. My flat is sacrosanct. No one can enter without my permission. But I think that's a lovely, I think that's mm -hmm. a lovely, um, Oh, I, yeah. I just realised I was looking for the pediments down at the bottom, but she means the pediment up on the top, doesn't she? Yes. yes. Mm. You can see that's on her eye line. But what a magnificent view to have. Mm. I really, I really like that one. I like some of the yeah. I like that all the lights coming through those two as well. The golden. Yes. Yes. The, yes. They're, 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 it's almost like a camera shot where they're in focus and the museum isn't quite, or seems mm. like mist. I wonder how many layers of paint she's got on that sky. Yeah. <laughs> a lot, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. But it gives it a warmth that some of the mm. others don't have. Mm. There's depth somehow, isn't there? Yeah. 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 This one is one of her later paintings in 2018, which is a self-portrait. And again, no fancy dresses for her. It's, uh, <laughs> it's again back to the um, the, 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 the almost a shroud like dress of her. She's actually, you know, she's she's very grateful that she's got a son who she's obviously very much loves. She's also actually married, and her her partner, who's also a a poet and uh, uh, a, a very you know not famous but reasonably well known, 
they he's got a, a a flat somewhere else and they they visit each other but he doesn't live here in in her flat so she has a strange but obviously very much a working relationship that's going on well so that's my um that's my <laughs> take <laughs> okay good yeah thank you did you enjoy it? <laughs> Very much. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say I enjoy, I enjoyed I it. I'm not sure about enjoy. It's so sad and gloomy. <laughs> maybe, maybe I like gloom. I don't know. Maybe I just uh, found the gloom a bit appealing. I, I'm, I'm in a way, I probably more than I should. I relate painters to their personality, how what their lives have been like, and how they've got there. Um, I mean, you, you can just see a painting and take it for what it is, can't you? But it, you, I think you get something. Oh, I think Gordon's frozen. Have you frozen, Gordon? Mid clap. Yeah, never mind. He's, um, he looks very contemplative in that, doesn't he? I've got to say that she, in part, recovered from a relationship. I think it's not too fair, un unfair to say that she recovered from a relationship with Lucy and Freud and has, re and has got tremendous willpower to paint, you know, will to paint. She's mm. obviously incredibly dedicated to it and lives a very austere life. Yeah. So I, I, I do admire and, and going, going back to her um, original photo that we got of her, I don't know whether it's off. But I, I do like this photograph of her because yes, she does look to a certain extent at peace with herself. Maybe I'm wrong there. No, yeah. she does. Yeah, you know, and, and also when you, you remember the one where she was 17 and yeah, she's got this lovely relaxed face. Yeah. And she's still got a part of that relaxed face in this one. Yes. Yeah. So I think photograph she looks fine and relaxed, but the things yeah. she paints herself, the, the the sort of sad harrowing side of it comes out. It's mm. it's interesting, isn't it? Having the two of them side by side there. Yeah. Seeing yeah. how different she sees herself in a painting. But I, I, I've been really impressed by it anyway, and I think she's um, she's survived it well and come through as as definitely a painter in her own right, who's now quite highly regarded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You put a lot of work into it. You do give us a real background, don't you, with all the it's details? Great. It's well, great what you do. I yes, enjoy doing you. it myself, and it's just yeah, it's really just good. nice having Thank an you. audience for that. And then I can put them up, and I've got little uh, memory of it for me to have a look at later and see what I missed. <laughs> <laughs>